Hey everyone, today I'm going to be talking about motion capture and I'm going to be saying how it works and how it's helped out in a lot of films and video games. But before I say how motion capture works, we need to know what exactly motion capture is. So I'm going to be talking about both those things in this video. So you're probably thinking, yeah, I already know what motion capture is, but it isn't necessarily all that you think it is. It's only the capture of bodily motion. It's not actually the capture of the face or eyes or anything like that, just bodily motion. And there's two overarching types of motion capture, with the first being optical and the second being non-optical. So optical is based around cameras that tracks some sort of tracker's movement and translates that into data that a computer can use. And non-optical still brings in data, but it does it from mechanical movement or inertia movement or something like that, something that doesn't rely on cameras. Most of the time, you're probably going to be seeing optical motion tracking, um, but there are some non-optical motion trackers out there. With a good example of this being the Xsense suit, which uses accelerometers as well as gyroscopes to track the user's motion and translates that into data that again a computer can use. And in case you didn't know, accelerometers measure the acceleration, tilt and vibration and gyroscopes measure orientation and how fast the motion is happening in a 3D space. But yeah, optical is a lot more common and it comes under three types itself. There's active and there's passive and there's also markless, which isn't necessarily classed it as a separate category, but although it is pretty pretty different to active and passive. So passive is the one that you probably used to see, and it uses these kind of reflective spheres that are placed strategically along a suit that a person wears. And how this works is that there's infrared lights all around the cameras, and this infrared light shoots off, hits the reflective spheres, and bounces back. And the time it takes between leaving the camera to coming back to the camera is used to animate a virtual actor. Active is pretty similar to passive, although the difference is is that active makes the light itself and it sends that light to the cameras without the cameras having to send light to it first. So this is used in outdoor scenes where light changes and may not be that good at the time. And active systems are also pretty good too because the lighting on the suits can be adjusted by bringing them up and down in brightness and they can also be switched off if they're not actually needed. And then there's markerless systems which don't use any sort of tracking devices. Instead it relies on finding a specific part of the body or seeing specific clothing and it uses that to track instead. So this is a lot more common for consumers in Kinect and on Snapchat even and Instagram, those sorts of things are markerless tracking because there's no markers on your face or anything like that. But motion capture isn't usually the only thing that's used in movies nowadays. It's usually just used in pre-visualization and for video games. But when it comes to modern movies, they usually use performance capture, which actually includes motion capture, but it also adds on the motion capturing of the face as well as eye movements and things like that. And it also captures voice at the same time too. So the motion capture of facial features is done by a camera that's right in front of the actor's face pretty much the whole time. So if you look at behind the scenes videos and you see that kind of camera in front of the face, that's what it's doing. The results of that performance capture could be seen in real time by the, by the director. So if something didn't look good on the virtual actor, they could redo it or just make whatever changes are needed. Although this virtual character was only rough, it wasn't the final character by any stretch of the imagination, there still had to be light and added to it, the animation had to be further refined, so it's not a final product or anything, but it is something that the director can look at and see if it's coming out good or not. And yep, yeah, that's how motion capture works, as well as performance capture. So if you like this video and you want to see more of these types of videos, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to see when those videos do come out and to see all of my other content. I mean, you'd have to subscribe to see all my other content, but you may as well just do anyway. But yeah, I hope you all have a great day. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.